Sabah everybody and welcome back to the channel. You may already be aware of that the brand new Android P beta is available now. It's no longer an alpha, it's actually beta, which means we should be able to use it as a daily driver. The other thing is that it also makes it possible to actually come over as an OTA, as this is how I installed it on my device. I no longer need to sideload it. And I'll give you guys a link in the description below if you'd like to be able to do that on a compatible device. So here's some of the main differences in the UI. Pressing and holding on the back gives you access to changing the settings as far as the home, uh, the launcher widget as well as wallpaper. Uh, the home screen here, you can change it. You can change the different icon shapes. I have a different one. I'm using Teardrop, but we have additional features here. Uh, suggestions, app dots, all of those things are pretty much standard. Of course, wallpapers, you can still actually select them, go in there, and then select the ones that we had, the live wallpapers that we've had that came through. I still love this one with the beach. It just by far always mesmerizes me. So it looks really cool on mine and I kept it there. Uh, as far as the actual recents and how we use this navigation gesture, swiping up from the bottom gives you access to the recents app. That's how we're gonna be interacting with them and clicking it once takes you back home. Uh, swiping one gesture to the right swipes between the last two applications that you were using. So this is no, no longer no different than double tapping on the recents app. To change this, you do need to go into the settings or to turn it on even by default. You go into system, you go into gestures, and it's right there, swipe up home button. So by default, this is not turned on. If I turn it off, I get my normal notification or navigation bar. But turning this on takes me back into a new experience. And we'll get into that in a second. Swiping one more time gives you uh, basically if you continue the swipe, it takes you into the app drawer. And at this point, you'll notice where we have a couple of options there, which give us the ability to uh, see some actions of basically other than the recent app, things that we normally do. Like an example would be in those roughly around this time, I need to start navigating to work. It gives me this option right there on the left. And of course, if let's say I want to call my significant owner by default, I call her a lot. So it shows up on my, uh, on my suggestion. Interacting with your split screen is very simple. You go up once and then you'll have access to the recent application. Pressing and holding on the actual logo at the top gives you access to either app info, split screen if it's compatible and pinning. So split screen for me and that was for YouTube. I'm going to go with wallpaper. I assume it's compatible and it's going to open it up right there for me. Of course, we can customize, we can change. And if we want to done, we were done with it, we just bring it home. So that's very simple and it is there. I noticed that it wasn't really well explained as how do you still do that? Uh, and of course, uh, the other thing that we kind of don't have anymore is the ability of swiping everything. So we don't have clear all anymore. I'm hoping that does show up whenever we do actually get the final build of Android P. Notification dots are still there. You're able to interact with them. Again, as I showed you guys, you can do quick replies with options as now in the notification panel. Uh, and then of course, Going into the settings, the UI definitely did change. We noticed the more colorful options and then of course the categories that we have here. So everything is pretty much controlled in the same way. The battery optimizations that we do now have within Android P are supposed to be very different for saving us battery, be able to manage RAM and manage background processes. So a lot more optimizations built in into Android P as well as the fact that the display now has a more smarter adaptive brightness that will customize around the timeline of your day. So depending on what your normal preference, it will be a little bit better for you as far as the experience. But overall, I think for me, it's this gesture. Uh, this gesture option is definitely very smart, very intuitive, and the fact that it works over everything, it works really nice. The one thing I wanna to mention to you guys is that it doesn't work exactly the same over everything. So if let's say I'm here on Google Chrome, and I swipe up once, I can't do the continuous swipe. So from home, if I swipe up, go all the way up, my app drawer comes up. But if I'm within an application and I swipe up and keep going, it doesn't go all the way. So you have to do twice for you to be able to get that functionality. So just keep that in mind. And the last thing they did give us is the ability to customize our rotation. So rotation by default, if you have it turned off, and here's our YouTube application. And if I wanna do a rotation on it and go sideways, you notice there's a button here now on the right side. So we now have the ability of actually clicking it and it'll give us the rotation option. Alternatively, if you actually have it already turned on, so let's go ahead and well, we'll keep it here. Um, under the auto rotation, if you turn that on, now your phone will automatically rotate. But if you don't have that on, the option will show up in your keyboard or at the bottom panel next to the navigation button. So this is very exciting. Again, as I mentioned to you guys, this is available in a beta review. So it means not everything is 100%. I did put in my SIM 12 hours yesterday, actually. And uh, overall, call experience has been working fine. Uh, Bluetooth has had some issues whenever I connect to Bluetooth, so audio is a little bit finicky here. Uh, but it's nothing that will basically stop me from using this. Now, is this daily driver ready? I would say yes, if you're comfortable with a little bit of quirks and a couple of reboots uh, during the day. At least that's what I had to do yesterday. 
Uh, I would imagine if I had started fresh, meaning I did not upgrade from Android 8.1 over when all my applications are still here, this may have been a little bit better. But again, it's ready. If you have a device that is compatible and you want to be able to play with it, very, very nice. The camera still works the same. I didn't see any new features within the camera itself. So all the options we had before are still present on our Pixel 2 XL. So that's not going to change. The photo app and all of those things will get updated as time goes on. I want to say that the Google Now does look a little bit different than the way I see it on my other devices. But again, we're expecting a lot more new features coming up. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Like and subscribe as usual. Again, very, very happy to be able to get Android P. I'll see you guys in the next video.